Well, good morning, church. This this morning has just been a sweet spirit here. Um, Pastor kind of hit the nail on the head talking about, like, if there's any sadness, melancholy, depression, because I've been feeling all that in the last 24 hours, dealing with a, with a friend and just listening to what's going on in his life. It's just been hard on me because he's one of my best friends. And just being here in the house of God is where I need to be because sometimes your pastors go through things. And sometimes we just need to be here and just worship God. Sometimes we just need to be here and just listen to God's voice and, and soak in, in in what he has. So I'm so grateful that God is in this place right now. And God cares about pastors. And God cares about worship leaders. God cares about the janitors. Everything that makes the church go, God cares about that. And that's going to tie in with my, uh, my sermon. This morning I'm going to be talking about serving. And uh, Pastor introduced our new sermon series last week. Uh, there's six purposes that we're trying to aim our church at. And we're trying to move our church forward in those directions. And this morning I'm going to be talking about serving. And in the back there, there's a poster that shares all the different purposes that we have and three different ways that you can join in in helping those purposes. So this morning, we'll be talking about serving. And if you have your Bibles, let's look at 1 Peter 4, 10 through 11. I'm going to be reading out of the MEV. It's going to be there up on the screen. says this, as everyone has received a gift, even so serve one another with it as good stewards of the manifold grace of God. If anyone speaks, let him speak as the oracles of God. If anyone serves, let him serve with the strength that God supplies so that God in all things may be glorified through Jesus Christ, to whom be praise and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Let's pray. Lord, thank you. God, thank you that you are here in this place. God, that we are not alone. God, I pray that as we have worshipped you, God, through song, God, as as we learn through your word, God, I pray that you would help us to grow, to move forward. God, to, to invest in this church God, and invest in people. Because, God, you care about your people. Lord, we love you. In Jesus' name, amen. A couple years ago, our youth ministry went on a missions trip to San Diego. And there was no, like, real rhyme or reason other than the fact that my family went on vacation to San Diego one year. And then I got this missions trip packet, and I was like, oh, San Diego. Looks good. We can go there. It's affordable. It's not like we're going to like Columbia or somewhere that's like costs like $2,000. It was affordable. And I was like, all right, we'll go to uh, San Diego and help this church with their VBS and sports camp, knowing that we were going to do our own sports camp in VBS. So we had a little bit of experience. And let me tell you, when we got there, uh, getting to know this church in San Diego Uh, was a true uh, God thing because without our students, without our leaders going to San Diego, going to help that church, they would not have been able to put on their VBS. And they hadn't been able to in the past few years. So going there, we're really meeting a need. You see, serving is you seeing a need and meeting that need. We didn't know. We didn't know that. We were just thinking, we're going to go and partner with this church. They're going to have sufficient staff. That wasn't true. They're going to have all the things that we need. Not really. But we went there just with no expectation. And God filled the expectation. We were able to, really, we had to take it all on ourselves, really. I was kind of thrown into the fire. They said, okay, you know what to do, right? And I was like, yeah, okay. I don't really know the culture of your church. I don't really know the people in your church, but we all love Jesus. So let's 
Let's do this. Let's serve the kids that came. And there was like over 100 kids that came each day, each evening. And we were able to, to, to tell them about Jesus. And that wouldn't have happened without God really being behind the scenes working and sending us there. Serving is seeing a need and filling that need. Serving in the local church is about other believers, not us. It's not about me. It's not about Pastor John. It's about other people. The people, the person to the left, the person to the right. It's about serving them. How can I serve them? Selfish motives are to be checked at the door. Yes, it feels good to bless others, and that's one of the benefits that always happens. It happened when we went, on, went to our trip to San Diego. We left feeling blessed more than we were able to bless other people. But when you serve the church or serve fellow believers, yeah, you feel blessed, but the attention and the glory is not yours to own. It's not yours to keep. And last Tuesday, we do, uh, it was the last Tuesday of the month, and we did small groups at youth ministry, at youth group. And we were talking about sanctification and holiness. And uh, one of our students in our small group asked this question. He said, is it wrong to do good work and expect something in return? And the one thing that I love is that when students ask questions, the wheels are turning in their minds. They want to know. They're curious about Jesus. They're curious about Christianity. They're curious about why am I here and what am I doing here? The answer to his question is yes. When we serve, it is done humbly. Not to expect anything, but just to bless that person and help grow the local church. And this morning we're going to be talking all about serving the local church, specifically Angle Lake Neighborhood Church. And this might be a tough sermon for you if you're not serving, but I just ask that you would just listen in. That you would maybe take what we talk about this morning and go home and pray about it. Ask yourself, where can I serve in this church? Because I can tell you there are plenty of needs in this church. All of us in this room have been equipped with gifts talents and abilities and we are to use them for God's glory and building his church and we need each other here at Angle Lake Neighborhood Church the pastoral staff the board members and a handful of people can't do everything we need you and this morning we're going to talk about three things concerning serving and then we'll wrap up with some action steps and uh, maybe I'll give you guys some homework. You probably weren't thinking that you're going to come to church and get some homework, but you are. And I want to take a look into what scripture says about us serving in the church. Because, look, Pastor John and I and the other pastors can get up every Sunday here and encourage you until our faces turn blue. But real life change comes about when people understand the truth. When people understand the word of God and how God is motivating us, that God is pushing us to serve. My first point this morning is a question. What is our attitude when we serve in the local church? Colossians 3, 23 through 24 says this. It's going to be up on the screen as well. Whatever you do, work heartily as for the Lord and not for men knowing that from the Lord you will receive the inheritance as your reward. You are serving the Lord Christ. What is your attitude when you serve at Angle Lake Neighborhood Church? Our mindset, according to Paul, should be to work hard, not for people, but as we are working for the Lord. And as we work, I would say working is a form of worship. And I talked about this concept uh, this past Tuesday at youth, and the question that I posed was, are you grasping for attention? We were talking about sanctification and holiness, but in our context this morning, are you grasping for attention when you serve? Is your service ending up on Instagram? 
Is your service ending up on Facebook and Snapchat telling the whole world, hey, look what I'm doing. I'm picking weeds up from the church floor. I don't know, you know. We all want to be thanked for the work that we do, and that is welcomed. And as a pastoral staff, as someone on the team here, I thank you for serving. I thank you for sacrificing hours, sacrificing your time, your your days to to serve here, to serve the people, to serve people in in need in our community. But there's a difference in serving in humility and wanting attention for what we are called to do. And I shared this story at youth, so, and my stories are just getting repeated because I'm getting old. But, uh, yeah, Julie laughs because when I say I'm old, she's like, yeah, not really. Uh, Yeah, Uh, a couple Mondays ago, I went to the Mariners game with... uh, my wife and her sister and her family, and I have two little nephews, and uh, the game was rolling along. The Mariners were winning. We went, it was in the seventh inning. We walked down to, you know, the nicer seats. We were sitting up top. We were like, you know what? They, it's fine, you know. And we were down there and trying to watch the game because we were right there, and my little nephew, who's about two and a half, he keeps looking up at me. And he's like, Uncle Nick, look at me. Uncle Nick, look at me. And I look at him, make a little face, and then he laughs, and it keeps going, and it keeps going. And it just made me think, how are we doing that? When we serve, when we help someone, I we say, hey, look at me, God. I'm doing what you said to do. God, I'm doing what you commanded me to do. Are we grasping for attention when we serve? Knowing that the work you do is essentially worship unto the Lord, look, that frees us. When we know that we are serving not to get approval from the person to the left or to the right, but we're doing it for God, man, that frees you. Knowing that we're serving Christ. And our reward is the inheritance that we will receive when we reach heaven. Look, look, that seems like a long time from now. But take heart because God sees you. And he will lift up those who are humble. And it's easy for us to grumble and complain in the walls of the church. We say, well, the church isn't doing this. The church isn't doing that. And I appreciate feedback. I really do. I appreciate constructive criticism. And I'm sure Pastor John does. He talks about it all the time. We welcome that. But can I just, from one of your pastors to you, can I just give you a little word of encouragement here? Examine your heart before you give that feedback. And ask yourself, is this an area that, is, is, uh, that I can serve and help the staff? Or is this feedback framed in a way that is encouraging and that will allow me to take part in the change? Or is it just giving the staff more to do? I don't mind doing more, but I want to do more with you. I want to do more together. I would encourage you this morning, serve with a grateful, positive heart that will rest after an event, that will rest after a church service and Let it ride for a little bit before starting to analyze the event, before coming together and analyzing the event. To be honest, for me personally, this is how I feel. It's very disheartening for me after we do an event, after something happens at the church, and then right after that, you know, you you pour hours, you pour effort, you pour time into it, and then someone comes up to you and says, hey, next time let's do this because this wasn't good enough. Hey, next time, can we cut that part out? Because I wasn't really feeling that. Listen, I love that. I love that you care, that you, that you want to give feedback. But let's just let it sit for a little bit. Enjoy what happened. Let's, let's praise God for the good things that he did at our events, at our classes, at our ministries. If you have feedback, bring that, but not five minutes after. This is, this is coming from me. As one of your pastors, and I say that because I love you and I care about you. And maybe you are here and you probably think to yourself, well, I don't have a gift. I don't have any talents. 
I'm too young. I'm too old. I'm not, not fit. This doesn't call you to sit on the sidelines. Because once you get in the game, I can guarantee you that you will find where you are created to serve in this church. Ask yourself these questions. What am I passionate about? What needs in the church could I fill? What brings me joy? And wherever you serve, understand that it is for God and not for people. And so if you aren't doing something that you love, that's okay. Because there are needs in this church. There are times where we just need people to help clean up, to help throw out the trash. And dare I say, change dirty diapers. We need people. And I thank people that do that each week. Anyone can do those jobs, but yet they are all important because all those jobs are done as for the Lord. Look, sometimes serving each other is difficult. And if it wasn't for our mutual love for Jesus, really none of us would be friends here. We wouldn't know each other. But since we are in this building, and I hope that you're committed to this church, we must find ways to build relationship. And when we do, we know that we know how to serve each other. Being a pastor these last few years has, has taught me a lot of things, a lot of failures, a lot of successes, a lot of uh, lessons. One thing that I cherish, though, one thing that I really hold dear in ministry is that it's okay for me to ask for help when I need it. It's okay for me to pick up the phone and say, hey, can you help me with this? What's the worst someone can say? No? Okay, then I just move on to someone else. But we need each other. I need you. It's important for me, even when I don't need help, to delegate. To say, you know what, let's work on this together. And as one of your pastors here, I will work alongside with you. Personally, I don't believe in the type of leadership that gives out tasks and then I kind of just fade in the back. I don't believe in that. When I can and when I want to help, I don't mind serving alongside students, kids, or adults. I believe in servant leadership, lead by example leadership. My whole goal here is to serve you to the best of my ability. And that kind of, this morning when I was reading over my sermon, I kind of uh, came to recall a, a story. Uh, in high school, I volunteered at the Seattle Aquarium for one school year. I'm not really into sea animals or any of that kind of stuff, but my, one of my best friends in, in high school, he was really big into orca whales. He even, like, adopted one. You can get, like, you know, like, you can get with the stars that kind of write your name on it and all that. But... He said, like, hey, do you want to uh, volunteer at the aquarium and you get credit and stuff like that? I was like, sure. And I didn't know what to expect. Really, my job was to take people around to the aquarium and tell them about, hey, this is that animal. This is this thing. And we just kind of lead them through every exhibit. And one day we were at like a, a beach and we were doing this festival or event or something like that. And uh, they asked me to get into the sea otter costume. And I was like, uh, I'm just, all right, I'll, I'll give it a try. And yeah, you got to kind of dance around, say hi to kids, give high five to kids. And what they don't tell you is that the kids like to hit the mascots. It's not a lot of fun. But listen to me, I, I did that because, you know what? I'm serving the aquarium. I'm not getting paid to do it, but it's going to be on my resume. I can tell people, like, hey, I was an otter. <laughs> well, listen, I, I believe in servant leadership. If somebody asks me, hey, could you take care of this? Man, I got to tell I will do the best of my ability to try to take care of it. Pastor sometimes calls me slash. I, my title is youth pastor slash everything else. Internet goes down? Yeah, that's me. Something going on over there? Yeah, that's me. Change the light bulb? Yeah, that's me. 
but I don't, I'm not boasting in myself. Please understand that. But I will do whatever. If somebody comes to me and says, hey, can you take care of that? I'll find a way to get it done. If that means doing it myself or bringing in people together, man, let's do it. I'll do it. Because I know that it's serving Pastor John. It's serving the church. And really, it's serving God. And my second point this morning is to step out of your comfort zone when it comes to serving. Sometimes serving means stepping out of your comfort zone. And I grew up in this area. grew up in Tequila, SeaTac area. And uh, as we all know, it's a predominantly diverse neighborhood, diverse cities. And when I went to school in Kirkland, I had the opportunity to serve under a really great youth pastor at a church in Bothell. And Bothell and SeaTac are two very different places. And you might be thinking, well, that's not true. Well, in this neighborhood that the church was located in, it was very different from where I had grown up. And in this youth ministry, the majority of the students were homeschool students. And look, there's nothing wrong with homeschool students. Please understand, I'm not uh, bagging on them or anything. But in my observation, they were very different from who I was. We were totally two different types of people. And... I found it very hard to relate to these students. I realized the one thing I did have, though, a love for Jesus and a love for people. Look, church, that's all that matters when you serve. You might be thinking here, I don't have a gift. I don't know, I don't know what my gifting is. Or maybe you tell yourself, well, I'm, I'm scared of what people might think when I serve. People might be critical. Or maybe you think, well, you know, students won't think I'm cool if I serve in the youth ministry. Who cares about cool? Do you love Jesus? Yeah. Well, if you love Jesus, then you love his people, yeah. and you're ready to serve. Psalm 102 says this, Serve the Lord with gladness. Come into his presence with singing. And this is from the commentary. It says, Let God be served with gladness. By holy joy, we do really serve God. It is an honor to him to rejoice in him. And we ought to serve him with holy joy. Gospel worship, worshipers should be joyful worshipers. If we serve God in uprightness, let us serve him with gladness. We must be willing and forward to it, glad when we are called to go up to the house of the Lord, looking upon it as the comfort of our lives to have communion with God. We must be pleasant and cheerful. It is good to be here, approaching to God in every duty as to God our exceeding joy. We must come before him, his presence with singing, not only songs of joy, but songs of praise. Enters into his gates with thanksgiving. Look, and we're all human. We're flawed. We have insecurities. And when we serve with a goal of pleasing others in mind, we live in that insecurity. We're scared to fail. But when our gaze is adjusted on God, our goals become bigger when we serve. The fear decreases in size and our faith increases in our hearts. Stepping out of your comfort zone, knowing that God is with you. He's the one that gives us the strength to serve. And maybe God is calling you here to serve in the kids' ministry. Maybe he's poking at your heart to do that. And you don't really understand kids. Maybe you don't even like kids and that's okay because the Bible says we're to love people even when we don't like them. But take encouragement here. The Word of God tells us in Galatians 6.10, So then, as we have opportunity, let us do good to everyone. And if you have trouble you know, being in kids' ministry, just underline everyone and just write kids. And especially to those who are of the household of faith. Do good. 
especially to those who are in this church. And these sermons that Pastor John has prepared and I've prepared is to help you or is geared to help you get into the game. This is not just one ear out the other. Hopefully that doesn't happen to you on a week-to-week basis. And these sermons are not created for you to just sit there and think about it and then next year come to us and say, oh, Pastor Nick, I remember the sermon that you spoke. The purpose of this is to help you get started somewhere in this church. Step out of your comfort zone and see what God does in your life and how he will use you to bring him glory and others to him. There might be a need in this church that only you can fill. Maybe God is speaking to your heart right now. But if you never get out of your seat and start, that need will pass you by and will go unfilled. My last point this morning is we are called and empowered by God to serve in the local church. Ephesians 4, 11 through 13. He gave some to be apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers for the equipping of the saints for the work of the service, for the work of service, and for the building up of the body of Christ until we all come into the unity of the faith and the knowledge of the Son of God into a complete man to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. Here's what the commentary tells us about these verses here. The church is the body of Christ. In the body, it is not necessary for any one member to have all the gifts. These gifts should be for all the members. God's gift was for some people to be apostles, for some to people to be prophets, and also it was for some to tell the good news about Jesus. And it's for some to be pastors and teachers. The purpose is to prepare God's people to do his work. This is so that Christ can build up the church, his body. The leader's work is to give the members the equipment that they need. Then the members can do their jobs in the church. Think about the reason for this. It is because God was building them up into one body in Christ. The apostles, prophets, pastors, and other people that Paul mentioned earlier have different gifts. They use their gifts to help all members of the church to be Jesus' servants. They can then do the work of Christ. They can tell people outside the the church about Jesus. Jesus is the head of the church. He gives gifts to each member. God then builds up his church, and it grows as all the members use their gifts. In Gold Lake Neighborhood Church, it takes everyone. It takes everyone using their gifts in order for our church to walk forward, in order for our church to reach more of our community, in order for our church to continue to grow spiritually. We need everyone. God is desiring to build up his church just like he was with the church that we read about in the New Testament. Everyone in the church has a place to serve. You have a gift. The church can grow as everyone takes part, not just a handful of people. It takes everyone to do their part. So much so like a quarterback can't function without a line. Now in Seattle, it's kind of different because Russell Wilson just runs away and our line is very bad. But really, you need a a good line to be a successful team. A basketball player cannot win one, one versus five people. It just doesn't work. There are many examples where it takes a team to claim victory. And saying that you are too busy, maybe you're hearing it's like, oh, Pastor Nick, I'm too busy. I've got work. I've got kids. I've got this and that going on in my life. That's not an excuse. I'm sorry to say that, but that's the truth. We are all busy. But as Christians, we are called and more importantly, empowered by God to serve in the church. Everybody can give some time. It doesn't have to look a certain way. 
Can you give a day? Great. Can you give a couple hours to pick up some kids or students so they can be a part of the, the body of Christ? That's great too. Can you call, text, hang out with someone and encourage them? Awesome. It doesn't have to look like coming in eight hours a day. It doesn't, ha- doesn't have to look a certain way. There are plenty of things that you can do at our church that will bless and encourage people and move the purpose of our church along. For our church to continue to move forward, we need everyone to choose to be all in. This morning, church, it's your choice to choose to be all in, not halfway in or one toe in. But if this place is your home church, dive into all that we have here. It's great that we all get together on Sundays. There's so much more than just Sundays. ALNC is a great place if you want to serve, and I can assure you of that. There are many people here who sacrifice, who take time off work, spend hours mentoring the younger generations, praying for people in the body. And I'm always amazed at what happens once a week in July, every July. There's over 50 kids that come into our church for one week, and we have a VBS and sports camp, and it's an amazing week, and I can tell you it's, a, it's an exhausting week as well. My wife can testify to that because we go home at the end of those days and we just fall asleep, and it's like 5 o'clock and it's still sunny and it's just tired. But when I sit back and think about all the volunteers who stepped out of their comfort zone, realize that God is empowering them to do his work And the way they serve in a humble, joyful manner, that fills my heart with so much gratitude, with so much love. Because those people who choose to serve that week, they're focused on loving and bringing the message of Jesus to kids who so desperately need it. A lot of the students that show up to our VBS in sports camp, they come from broken homes. All they see around them is dysfunction. But when they come here, at like 9, 10 in the morning, when they walk into this church, they see smiles. They see people who will welcome them, people who love them, people who show them grace, give them structure and loving discipline. Can I tell you that it impacts a kid for a lifetime? Man, when they grow up, they'll remember, hey, I went to a week-long camp at a church And these people were so nice to me. They shared Jesus with me. They told me about salvation. They told me about whatever topic we talked about. You all who serve become their friends that week, encouraging them, lifting them up, building them up in Jesus. And a lot of our students and children that are in our church are products of people seeing a need and meeting that need. I can guarantee you that ask, ask a kid, ask a student, ask them their story. I can guarantee you that somebody from our church invited them to come. Somebody picked them up. Somebody texted them a reminder, say, hey, come to church. And there are some of you who have contributed to our young people's growth, whether that's spiritual growth, maybe that's teaching them how to be an adult, maybe you showed them life skills, You provide them a place to come and learn about God, to feel loved and welcomed. Myself, personally, I love van ministry. And for some of you guys, you're like, get me away from that. That's not, that's not for me, but for personally, myself, I love getting in that van. Kids text me, say, hey, Pastor Nick, can I get a ride? I'm like, okay, yeah. And I just go pick them up, come back to church. And then that in between time, we get to talk because you can't jump out of a moving van. You're there. You're stuck. I'm going to lock the doors. Then we get to talk. We get to talk about life. We get to talk about what's going on in the relationship with God. And they get to ask questions. And we get to dig deep and answer those questions. And then at the end of a long night on a Tuesday, and I take them home again. And after that, there's more kids that show up that we we take home than we, uh, we take home than we pick up. So there's a ton of more kids in there, and they sing songs, worship songs. They encourage each other. 
They lift each other up. It's just awesome to be a part of that. And I'm so glad our church cares about that. Van ministry is vital to our church. We can't do any of this stuff without you, church. We need you. The pastoral staff, the board, we need you. And you need us. Realize that we are called into this. And that might seem scary for some of you. Know that God will empower you to do his work in a humble and joyful way. This morning, if the worship team could come back up. You might be here asking yourself, what are some areas? Maybe you're ready to serve. Maybe you're ready to, to dive in and to plug into the needs that we have here. And you're asking yourself, what are some areas that I could serve in? Well, if you picked up a bulletin this morning, and the bulletin, there's an insert. And the insert it lists all the different ministries, areas you could serve in that we have. This is, where, this is where you have homework. So I would encourage you, get over your fear and walk into the unknown of serving. It'll be messy. It'll be challenging. But let me tell you that your ultimate reward will be in heaven. And there's blessing to be found in serving the local church. And as we go back into worship this morning, I would encourage you to pray. Ask God, where am I supposed to serve? Where am I supposed to serve at Angle Lake Neighborhood Church? Maybe you take that home and you think about it and you pray about it and you call up Pastor John or I or somebody else on the, the staff here and you ask us, hey, where can I serve? Is there a need here? Man, I would love to meet with you. I would love to have those conversations with you and point you to the right direction. And if we as believers serve in our own strength alone, or in order to look good to others, we'll begin to find serving a wearisome task. But to serve God, to serve him with his strength, is to be able to go above and beyond. And to do so for one purpose. God will be given glory in everything through Jesus Christ. Church, when we serve, that's our aim. To glorify Jesus. Amen. To bring glory and honor to God. Serving is just one of our purposes that we're going to be outlining the next few weeks, but would you commit to being all in? And here are three ways that you can do that with these action steps. First, be in Sunday morning worship service regularly. You're here this morning? Great. Keep coming. Keep coming. We want you to be a part of the body. There's people here that need you. You are important. Church, you are important. Number two, be in at least one of our discipleship classes weekly. Sunday mornings, 9.30 to 10.15 a.m. Sunday nights at 6 p.m. Or Friday nights, 6.45 to 8 p.m. That's during the school year. Be a part of a discipleship class. Number three, find a ministry to serve in. See a need and fill that need. And as we go back into worship, I don't really have a, a call or response other than pray about where you can serve. And don't delay. Church, can I tell you, don't delay. Don't wait till the fall. Don't wait till summer starts. Today is the best opportunity for you to start asking questions, for you to start visiting different ministries, for you to start praying about where God wants you to be. And I look forward to what God stirs up in our hearts and lives in the coming weeks. And it's so exciting for me to see the church in action. Let's take a few minutes. If you would, let's stand and let's respond to God. Let's take time to pray as we sing this song to him.